Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am so honored to be here. Uh, thank you so much for everyone joining us. And I want to say uh, uh, thank you for joining us on a dry Chicago morning. Uh, and uh, summer is, or yeah, I guess summer and spring are just around the corner here. So uh, first of all, I want to say a big thank you to President Tony Preckwinkle for her incredible leadership. I want to thank uh, our CEO, uh, Israel Rocha uh, for, of Cook County Health, uh, Dr. Mark Lofman, the Chair of Family Medicine for CCH, and of course uh, to all of you and to Provident Hospital for hosting us. Uh, and uh, thank you to uh, um, everybody out there who is paying attention to the very important issue that we're about to talk about today, which is the mental health uh, of our frontline healthcare workers. You know, oftentimes we refer to our healthcare workers as heroes, but as you know, they're human beings too. And like all human beings, uh, they bear the struggles and the burdens that uh, all the rest of us have during this pandemic, but they've had to endure even more hardship in that they've exposed themselves repeatedly to the risks of COVID-19 while treating people, and of course, uh, they've exposed their families too. And on top of that, they've had to cope with uh, the, the lack of personal protective equipment and all the other um, inadequacies of the initial response uh, to COVID-19 back in February and March 2020. But on top of all of that, they've also had to bear the burden of uh, the mental health struggles associated with COVID-19. Even before the pandemic, uh, unfortunately, 70% of healthcare workers uh, reported symptoms of anxiety and depression. They had higher rates of burnout, and they had higher rates of suicide than anyone else in the population. Unfortunately, we were losing one doctor a day to suicide. My wife is a physician. Uh, she's an anesthesiologist, and she was one of the front frontline healthcare workers who was intubating COVID-19 patients at the start of this pandemic. And I'm so proud of her and all the doctors and the nurses and the other healthcare workers who really battled this pandemic to a point where today uh, we are in a much better place than where, where we were before. However, the scars of those mental health battles remain with them. And so I'm so proud that working in a bipartisan way, I and others authored the Dr. Lorna Breen Provider Protection Act, also known as the Dr. Laura, Lorna Breen Act. Dr. Lorna Breen was an emergency uh, doctor in New York City who died by suicide when the burdens of the pandemic were just too overwhelming for her. And so in her memory, we authored this legislation to make sure that our healthcare heroes have the mental health resources they need to cope, not only with the ongoing pandemic, but with the daily struggles of practicing medicine everywhere. And so this particular legislation will do two, three things. First, it will establish grants for healthcare entities and hospitals like Provident and others and Cook County Health to establish or expand programs dedicated to improving the mental wellness of healthcare professionals. Two, it will disseminate evidence-based and time-tested best practices that work in addressing uh, these healthcare workers' struggles. And three, the law will co commission a longitudinal study on what works and what doesn't work in addressing the mental health challenges that healthcare workers have uh, dealt with at their facilities. I think that um, in sum, I just want to say uh, we actually met at Cook County Health maybe a year ago to talk about this particular legislation passing the House. And thanks to the efforts of the Biden administration, along with my colleagues who came together in the House and the Senate, we are here now to say that bill not only passed the House, it passed the Senate, and now it's signed into law and $150 million in healthcare resources will now be available over the next three years to deal with the tremendous toll that our healthcare workers have suffered. So with that, let me now introduce uh, President Tony Preckwinkle as well. 
Good morning. Good morning. I want to thank Congressman Krishna Morthy for that kind introduction and for his remarks. Um, he is a friend of our health care system. Uh, he's been at several press conferences um, here at Stroger to talk about uh, initiatives in Congress, brought his colleagues along, so I'm very grateful to him. I'd also like to take a moment to recognize Dr. Mark Lofman, who's immediately to my left and uh, who's chair of Family Medicine for Cook County Health, and Israel Rocha, who's our Cook County Health CEO, and who will be all, both of whom will be speaking shortly. For more than two years, healthcare workers around the world, as you heard from Congressman Krishnamurthy, have been on the front lines of this pandemic. We call them heroes, but there really isn't a word to describe what they've done. From the early uncertain days when we didn't know what we were dealing with, to developing action plans, to rolling out a vaccine program, we cannot thank our healthcare workers enough for what they've done. But they are human beings, as the Congressman said, in addition to being heroes, and the pandemic has taken a terrible toll on them. I'm thrilled that our federal partners are recognizing the toll that the pandemic has had on our healthcare teams and ensuring that they have the resources they need to get the care that they need. Among other items, the legislation establishes grants for training healthcare professionals, students, residents, in evidence-informed strategies to reduce and prevent suicide, burnout, and mental health conditions, including substance use disorders. It seeks to identify and disseminate information on reducing and preventing suicide and burnout among healthcare workers, training healthcare professionals in appropriate strategies, and promoting their mental and behavioral health and job satisfaction. And it establishes a national evidence-based education and awareness campaign targeting healthcare professionals to encourage them to seek support and treatment for mental and behavioral health concerns. Finally, it establishes a comprehensive study on healthcare professionals' mental and behavioral health including the impact of COVID-19 on their profession. Every day, healthcare workers are there for us when we need them. It's imperative that we be there, them, we be there for them when they, need, when they need us. Now, you know, my, my daughter is a, is a nurse. Uh, Congressman Krishnamurthy's wife is a doctor. So we're both personally familiar with um, the commitment and dedication of our healthcare professionals and the good work that they've done uh, against terrible odds and in a very difficult moment in our country's history. So I want to thank all of them personally. Now I'd like Israel Rocha, Chief Executive Officer of our healthcare system, to come forward. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, it is truly a pleasure to be here with you today, and I want to start by really expressing our appreciation and our thanks on behalf of our 6,000-strong uh, care team at Cook County Health. We truly want to thank you, Representative Christian Murthy, for your leadership and securing the funding for these resources. I think that what can be said today from this legislation, more than anything else, is that today um, I think this legislation sends a very personal thank you to all the healthcare workers throughout the United States, and more importantly, it says that I see you. I think in healthcare, uh, we really concentrated during COVID-19 on the pandemic, on what we were fighting, what was before us, the suffering, the pain. But there were a lot of enablers to healing that allowed that to happen, and I think this legislation today to all of them says thank you and we see you and we care for you. Uh, I would like to thank President Perkwinkle for her continued support and for her leadership of our Cook County Health System and our staff. We could have asked for no stronger advocate throughout this pandemic and throughout our entire uh, time that we worked together. I think all through her career, not just while being president, President Perkwinkle has been a staunch and stalwart advocate of our patients, our team, our communities, and building a better health system to serve our county and our patients and our staff. Across the globe, healthcare workers are experiencing unprecedented levels of burnout. We see this every day. We've heard terms like the great resignation. People are looking to other avenues. It is clear that legislation like today can make a big difference in helping to stem that tide. It is critical that we address on a large scale assistance to our care, per, to our care providers. That we remember simply just because you render care does not mean that you need your own care. And so this legislation takes a step forward in doing that. 
Cook County Health, as we said, has more than 6,000 team members who work from the front line to our support teams to all instrumentation that is required across our hospital and enterprise to enable healing. Our healthcare workers are at the epicenter of the pandemic. They are at the epicenter even individually when a patient comes into the room and they are the enabler who can empower healing. They are their guide to being able to live a, a healthier life together. It is a joint enterprise between the caregiver and the patient to be able to enable healing. And we thank them by showing appreciation and providing resources that allows them to heal as well. They have risen to the challenge for caring for our patients struggling with a deadly virus that at the beginning we knew very little about. I think that every day uh, our care team members work tirelessly more than ever during this pandemic to make sure that everyone who needed care received it. Owning our mission, uh, which is to provide care regardless of ability to pay, truly during this time because we saw everyone suffering and as we have always said, illness knows no barrier, makes no distinction, and attacks everyone equally. If there is one thing that we know is that when it comes to illness, there are no barriers that has sometimes divided our society. It may be a unifier in the most unfortunate way, but it reminds us that we should be united as a collective citizenry, and legislation like today makes that possible. So on behalf of all of our care team and all of our members at Cook County Health, we want to thank you, Congressman Krishnamurthy, um, President Perkwinkle, and all of the commissioners for standing by us, by standing for our team, uh, and celebrating their work and their effort and knowing them that they have partners in care every day. Thank you so much. Uh, and a few words in Spanish. <coughs> Buenos días y muchas gracias por todos por estar aquí hoy. Agradezco el representante Krishnamurthy por su liderazgo en obtención de fondos para recursos para el salud mental para nuestros trabajadores en el salud de nuestra nación. También le doy las gracias y todas las presentaciones uh, para, para poder pasar esta ley que ha ayudado a mucha gente que trabaja en nuestros hospitales y nuestras clínicas por, todo, por toda la nación. Y me gustaría agradecer a la Presidenta Prequenco por su continuo apoyo de Cook County Health y a nuestro personal. Ella ha sido una firme defensora de nuestros pacientes, nuestros equipos y nuestras comunidades durante esta pandemia. A través En todo el mundo, los trabajadores de salud han estado en la, en, en la línea frontera ayudando a nuestras familias y nuestros pacientes. Es fundamental que estos uh, abordamos, estamos en gran escala para poder apreciar sus, sus efectos. Cook County Health tiene más de 6,000 miembros en nuestro equipo, desde el personal médico de primera línea hasta nuestros equipos de apoyo. Todos y cada uno de ellos han sido instrumentales para poder trabajar a realizar uh, este momento que estamos a hoy, que estamos uh, ayudando para poner un fin a la pandemia de COVID-19. Nuestros trabajadores de salud están en el epicentro de la respuesta de la pandemia. Ellos han enfrentado y desfriado de cuidar a nuestros pacientes con lucha contra la virus mortal y con el, y con el principio no sabíamos muy poco. Esa relación puede ayudar a nuestros uh, gente que están ayudando a nuestras familias, a nuestros médicos, a nuestros ayudantes. Es un paso muy poderoso para poder ayudar a nuestros uh, gente que están ayudando a nuestros pacientes, a nuestros médicos, a nuestra comunidad de salud. Y, y les dice a ellos que los vemos, que son importantes y que queremos salir para su salud también. Y le damos muchas gracias al representante Christian Murthy para poder pasar esta ley que ayuda a mucha gente. Ayudar a nuestra gente que ayuda con avanzar la salud por ser médicos, enfermeras, y en poder de eso entonces ayudan nuestros pacientes. Estamos muy agradecidos y muchas gracias. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm uh, Dr. Mark Lofman. I have the privilege of being chair of the Department of Family and Community Medicine at Cook County Health. Um, and I'm really honored to be here to help celebrate the signing of some groundbreaking legislation. The Dr. Laura Breen Healthcare Provider Protection Act is truly much needed and long overdue. Um, it's groundbreaking in that it brings the evidence-based science and research and support and helps lower the stigma. And we really are so thankful for the leadership Dr. Congressman Krishnamurthy has led in helping us get this legislation forward. Cook County, as has been said well, articulated by 
President Preckwinkle and, and Mr. Rocha has been at the forefront of this for over two years now. We were here that February 2020 when this started. We, it's a privilege, really, for us to be here. Um, we have cared for almost 3,000 inpatients uh, with COVID since the pandemic started. Um, 300,000 COVID tests have been provided by our providers to patients to help them sort through and navigate who has COVID and who doesn't. We will soon administer our one millionth COVID vaccine. One million, unbelievable, unprecedented level of commitment. And so that has been an honor and a privilege to be part of it. Um, it's what we train for. At the same time, physicians and healthcare workers, we've been getting accolades. If you all remember in those first few months, every evening at eight o'clock, the parades of uh, banners and signs and honking and clapping for us. Uh, people brought food and said thank you. So we have been blessed as well. But at the same time, an alarming number of healthcare providers, physicians, are anonymously, when anonymously surveyed, express they are overwhelmed. They're done. They don't know that they can do this any longer. And they suffer silently. 87% of those who report anonymously that they're overwhelmed say they're afraid or don't know that they can bring that forward and talk to anybody about it because the stigma and fear and the barriers that have been there forever. And so many suffer alone, and they suffer alone until finally a suicide is triggered, and they can never go back. Many others, the suicide is the tip of the iceberg. Many others suffer quietly, go on, and, and feel harm. There's, a, there's this constant fear that we can't do enough. We'll lose another patient. Another patient won't be able to get the care that they need and deserve. Or we have the constant fear that in trying to do enough, we've harming our relationships with families and friends and, and loved ones in a way that's irrevocable. And this is not new, but it's been well stated. Um, COVID has just put a magnifying glass on this and brought it forward in ways that are unprecedented. And it's been a long two years in that regard. So while we're blessed and privileged to do the work and can't think of a better place than Cook County Health to serve our community, also healthcare providers across the country are overwhelmed. Um, we can do better and we need to do better. And this legislation goes a long way toward opening up the doors to allow that to happen. Again, our workforce, the healthcare providers in the US, it's a national treasure. It's a blessing and privilege to have them and we need to take care of them and we need to make it okay for them to speak up and say, I need help, I need a break, I need some coverage and support and it needs to be okay for them to do it. This legislation starts to do that and it brings evidence and science to it in a way that we really believe brings hope. I know my provider staff is hopeful. When they hear this and see this is happening, they know someone's listening, someone cares, um, and it's truly heartwarming to feel the support that's there. So again, Congressman, thank you for taking a leadership here. I know it's gonna be helpful. It's gonna bring our workforce the much needed honor and support that they deserve. Thank you.